Study Article 29 of the Watchtower, May 24, is dealing with all the doctrinal changes introduced in the annual meeting of 2023. The Watchtower is preparing its membership to accept the sad reality that not all the world will hear the good news of the Kingdom before the end. For this, they employ two verses from the New Testament that they believe it helps them make their case. Let's see their reasoning together in paragraph 6 and 7. Consider what Jesus said about the scope of our preaching work. He foretold that the good news would be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all the nations. That prophecy is being fulfilled today as never before. Their kingdom message is published in more than a thousand languages and by means of the JW.org website. It is available to the majority of the world's population. The word all is the verse holos, a primitive adjective and the root of the English term whole. Properly, holy, where all the parts are present and working as a whole, i.e. as the total, which is greater than the mere sum of the parts. When the verse speaks of all the inhabited earth, one will assume that the preaching would have to be worldwide. Unfortunately, as I have previously mentioned, the Watchtower laments that only 60% will ever hear this news, excluding the whole Muslim world and the People's Republic of China, that total to 3.2 billion from the current total of 8.1 billion of the world's population. This is a far cry from what Jews expect and a far cry from what they used to profess to accomplish in previous years. So how do they get around this discrepancy? Well, by misapplying another verse to make their case. But for that, let's read the following paragraph, paragraph 7. However, Jesus also told his disciples that they would not complete the circuit of the cities or preach to everyone before he would come. Jesus' words will prove to be true in our day as well. Millions of people today live in areas where the preaching work is severely restricted. In addition, hundreds of babies are born every minute. We do our best to reach people from every nation and tribe and tongue with the good news, but the fact is that we will not be able to share the good news with each individual on earth before the end comes. Here is the problem. One of the main rules of cor correct Bible interpretation, universally accepted by most Bible scholars, is this. You cannot use an obscure verse to explain a well-defined and understood verse. What do I mean by that? Jesus' statement in Matthew 24, 14 is straightforward and easily understood. All the inhabited earth means exactly this, all the inhabited earth. No boxes on Muslims and no boxes on Chinese because they are hard to preach to and a lot of persecution will be expected something that the fattened calves of the Watchtower leadership have no stomach, no pun intended, or divine authority to take on. So what about this verse in Matthew 10, 23? The Watchtower will have you believe that this verse has to do with the time of the end, but that this is not entirely true, and this is a difficult verse that is still dividing scholars to this day. To fully understand its meaning, we need to consider the context, something the Word Tower never does. So let's read from uh, both verses 22 and 23 in their entirety. And there it says, And you will be hated by all people on my account of my name, but the one who has endured to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one city, flee to another. No time for witnessing, but they will still have to try even under persecution. For truly, I say to you, you will by no means complete the circuit of the cities of Israel until the Son of Man arrives. So here are some prevailing views among scholars. 
Some understand that Jesus has returned to talking about the more immediate mission of the twelve to the towns of Israel while he's still alive. In that case, he's saying that he, as the Son of Man, will come to them before the finished preaching and healing in all the towns of Israel. The problem with this idea is that we don't know of any persecution of the apostles before Jesus' death, so I tend not to accept this view. Other scholars believe Jesus was talking about the coming of the Son of Man, meaning himself, in judgment against Israel, and that this was fulfilled in 70 AD, when Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. In that case, Jesus pictures these apostles experiencing persecution until that moment as they carried the gospel from town to town in Israel. Another view is that Jesus is describing his own return to earth to establish his physical kingdom when what is often described as the second coming or the day of the Lord. The question with this view is why Jesus seems to say that it will happen before the apostles, his actual first century disciples, right? And not the governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses 19 centuries later. So why is it that Jesus seems to say that it will happen before the apostles can finish taking the gospel to its town in Israel, when in fact it has still not taken place long after the apostles have died. Other views and variations on those views exist as well. None of them is held too strongly by a majority of scholars. All easily agree, however, that Jesus is clearly communicating that the persecution of his followers will serve the purpose, the purpose of moving them from place to place, spreading the preaching of the gospel far and wide. This is exactly what happened during the century following Jesus' death. In other words, these verses in Matthew 10, 23 and 24 seem to imply the method with which the gospel will be preached and not the extent to which this gospel will reach people during the time of the end. There is also one final argument that I would like to offer. The book of Revelation clearly shows that the beast-like system of the end is universal, according to Revelation 13.3. And all the earth followed the wild beast with admiration. And even Babylon the Great, which according to the Watchtower will have universal reads, we read in Revelation 17.15, the waters that you saw where the prostitute is sitting mean peoples and crowns and nations and tongues. This also aligns with Matthew 24, 14, where the gospel is described as being preached in all the inhabited earth. Do not be fooled by the word star which is not bestowed with a divine calling or authority to carry this message. You will find this article on my uh, website, jwupdates.com, where you will also find articles on many other teachings and doctrines of the word star as well as policies and up-to-date news on court court cases around the world, like Norway or the United States. And uh, if you would like to support my activism, please consider becoming a Patreon follower. There is a Patreon link to my account below in the description or a YouTube subscriber so I can carry on producing these videos and maintaining the website which will become, will be free for the foreseeable future. So thanks for listening to me guys, and I shall speak to you soon.